Hello friends, we are here in 1st Timothy chapter 3. So most of this chapter is talking about the different offices that you can have in church and, and what the qualifications are for those, for those different offices. There's really only two of them that they talk about. One is an overseer and the other is a, a deacon. The word overseer can be translated different ways, you know. It, it can be even kind of transliterated. The, the word overseer, it, it might be a bishop, but when you think of a bishop today, you think of, you know, a, you know, a, a Catholic official who's over a, a, like a whole city. And you know, that might be an archbishop. However, here, you know, it could be translator, it's kind of used interchangeably sometimes in the Bible with an elder or even a pastor. Back then, the church was not, it didn't really look like our churches today. You know, it's, a, it's an underground church, you know, the, they couldn't meet in big gatherings like we do today because they're being persecuted. So the church almost everywhere back then was a house church and an overseer was someone who would lead a, a house church so w though we may l think of a a bishop as someone who leads you know a whole group of giant churches or maybe a, an elder or a pastor who leads you know a, a pretty good sized church what he's really talking about here is like bible study leaders you know, people that are that are in charge of of a small congregation, and I think it's important to, to note that that those small groups are very important. You know, sitting and listening to a sermon that's that's important, but to have a small group, a group where the people can know each other, they they don't just listen, but they can speak. You know, they can ask questions to the, to the overseer there. You know, that's, that's really important. And if you don't have that in your life, you know, it, it, would, be, it would be helpful for your, for your spiritual growth to have a small group like that. Now, if you want to be one of these things, it says that, that you seek a noble cause. It's something that is good that you seek. And so it gives the qualifications, and basically it's saying you need to be a, a good person. You know, it says it in many different ways. But, you know, you need to be, you need to be someone that is not quarrelsome and doesn't fight. You know, you need to be able to teach. And I think that's important. The major difference between the overseer and, and the deacon is that an overseer is a teacher. The word deacon really means helper. And so this can mean a man or a woman. I guess that's debated, but you know, in, in other places in, in the book of Romans, it mentions Phoebe and it says that she is a deacon. So it's anybody that helps in the church. You know, this is, these are good people though. You know, it's the foundation of the church. And so it gives all the all the qualifications for the people that want to be a deacon here in this chapter and it's and it's very similar but it doesn't mention it doesn't mention that they need to be teaching because of course being a deacon doesn't mean that you have to teach I remember years ago I was in uh, a medium-sized church and I was asked to be on the world ministries team I was on the world ministries team for probably I don't know, 10 years. And at some point I was looking through this and, and I was trying to understand what these different, these different, you know, labels mean. And I realized, oh my gosh, I'm a deacon. And I was really happy about that. I was like, I, I never really needed, noticed it before, but me as being a helper in the world ministries team at my church, that means I'm a deacon. And it's interesting too because my church really did kind of vet the people that they that they chose to be in that position and they chose me and i felt really great about it you know if you're a leader in the church you should know that 
that it really does really empower your church when you give them wonderful things to do like that. When you, when you see something in someone and you give them the ability to use the gifts that they've been given. I don't think I'm a, a good deacon. <laughs> I think that there's a lot of people that had the abilities to be on the uh, world ministry team better than mine, but, but it really did a, a good job for me. Later, I was asked to be an overseer. You know, I led the college group as, as a young person. I, I led high school small groups as a young person. And, and I love it. You know, I love both of these, both of these offices. And uh, it, it should be said that at the end of this chapter, Paul says something that's really interesting. He says, you know, the, he's talking about the church and he's saying the church here is, you know, it's a, a buttress of the truth. A buttress is something, it's like a wall that holds something up. You know, uh, I guess I'm seeing the observatory right here. And right next to it, they spent a couple years just building up this wall so that this building wouldn't fall down. That's a buttress. It's this like retaining wall. It's something that holds up and he's saying, he's saying the church is a buttress of the truth. And, and he's just, he just really loves the church. God really loves the church. And, and then he, he talks about the mystery. You know, that, that's one thing that he mentions as, a, as something that is necessary for a deacon. Here's this buttress right here. You know, this is holding up that observatory right there. Otherwise, this, this whole thing would have come down. That's what the church is, to the truth. And, and so he mentions as, as one of the qualifications of a, of a deacon, it, it says that they need to, they need to with, a, with a clear conscience, understand the mysteries of God. And then he says something that's really interesting. It's, it's kind of a, you know, it's, it was thought to be as maybe one of the early church first hymns. You know, something that they would say that you should believe in the church. You know, this is the truth that they're holding up. And it's talking about Jesus. I probably won't remember it word for word, but it says something like, so it says he was manifest in the flesh. And he was vindicated by the Spirit. He was proclaimed among nations, believed in by the world, and taken up into glory. So that's, that's the truth that's being held up by the church. And it's a, it's a wonderful truth because it, it's there for, for our salvation. So that is 1 Timothy chapter 3. Have a great day. Bye.